has been over a year now since Vue 3 has been released. With the new changes, creating reactive Vue applications is easier than ever. Let's talk about Ref and Reactive. To get started, open up the folder you want to put your project in and then type this into your terminal. npm init view at latest. And then click enter. We're going to call this ref reactive project. We're going to say no to everything. Now go ahead and open up the folder where you installed your project. Select that folder. And then you're going to see all your files right here, but we still have to install all those node modules that we just downloaded. So open up your terminal and type npm, get rid of that, npm install. Now that it's done, go ahead and hit npm run dev to run the application. Now that we have successfully ran our project, we want to delete everything and just start from scratch. Go ahead and hit app view, and then we're going to delete everything in this template right here. And we're going to delete all the styles as well. Delete these components right here and delete all these styles. And now we have an empty app view application. We are going to create a main tag to put all of our elements in. And just for the sake of the way I like it, we're going to go ahead and put the script under the template. And let's make a header. Now we have a header in our application. All right, now we can get started. A good rule of thumb when making reactivity in a Vue application is to always use ref first unless you find a need to use reactive. So we want to replace this header with a variable, and then we're going to want to change this header based on a button that we're going to press. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and add a variable called title. We're going to call it, this is the page title, and then we're going to include it here with our mustache syntax. And we're going to see it change and we have a title right here based off this variable right here and we'll capitalize it just so it looks good and we're going to add a button so we can then change it and this button is going to call a function called change title we're adding a click event handler that will call this method and now we have to add the function change title So now that we have the function, whenever we click this button, it's going to call this function. We can add a console.log just to make sure that this happens. And let's go ahead and get our log out here. Now we opened up our log. You can hit Control Shift J to close or open up your console log. And you'll have your console right here. So every time we click this button, you're going to see title has been called. And we have successfully connected this event handler to this method. So what we're going to do is change this variable. And then supposedly we should see a change here if we change this variable to some other value. But it's not going to work and we'll show you why. So we're going to put title right here and then we're going to go ahead and change this to new title. And then we're going to console log this title out. So this is what's going to happen. We're going to click this and we're going to change this value, but it's going to stay exactly the same. See, if you look at the console log, we see that it's now equal to new title, but the re-render has not happened. And the reason is because we need to use ref in order to make this variable reactive for changes to occur in re-render if this variable changes. So we have to import ref, destructure it out from view. And then we need to wrap this string for this variable and ref in parentheses. All right, so you think, okay, maybe we have it reactive now, should it change? It still doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because whenever you have a ref variable, you have to access it using dot value syntax. So now it will work. And there, we have a reactive variable in our application. We just deleted everything in the template and the script. We just included the main tag and left that. So we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to render based off a truthy value, true or false, and it's going to be called let's jump in the pool. That is our application. So we're going to have two titles here that changed based off whether a variable is true or false. We're going to have a variable here, which will have text inside of it, which will render based off true or false. We're going to create that truthy value, that ref variable. And then we're going to create a method to toggle this truthy value from true to false or false to true. So let's get started and write our titles right here. So our first title is going to be let's jump into the pool. And we're going to have a second title that's going to say we are in the pool. 
So both of them are gonna render the screen right now because we haven't set any values yet. And now we want to have, and this is for the titles right here. So let's go ahead and copy and paste that up here. And then we're gonna create our button. So our button's already created. And we're just gonna have a value in here for right now, jump and pool. And now we have both the titles and the button text. So let's go ahead and set up our truthy ref variable. Let is in pool equal ref false. So we're not in the pool yet. And we have to make sure we import ref and destructure it out from view before we use it. All right, so now we have a value right here. So let's go ahead and start adding some logic to render these things conditionally. And we're gonna use a directive called vf, just like using an if statement. And we're gonna say right here, if is in pool or isn't in pool, we're gonna make that false. That's not gonna render. We're gonna say v if is in pool. So right now we see in the browser, it says let's jump into the pool. That's because is in pool is false. We are not in the pool yet, that's false. And we said right here, if is in pool is false with this exclamation mark right here, we're gonna render this. But when is in pool is true, we're gonna say we are in the pool. It's not true yet, but if we do change this, you'll see that it does render we are in the pool. So we're gonna just change it back real quick. And now we want to change the text of the button based off of this value right here. So let's go ahead and add some mustache syntax into the text right here. We're gonna use a ternary operator, which is JavaScript. I will include the documentation to the JavaScript um, about how to use ternary operators. Basically what I'm gonna say here is, is in pool, and if it is in the pool, if it's true, we're going to render get out of pool. And if it's false, if we're not in the pool yet, we're gonna render jump into jump now. All right, so we have it right here. It says, let's jump into the pool. And if I click this button, it will jump now. Nothing happens yet because we haven't uh, created the method. We now have to create that event handler to be connected to a method that will change this from true to false. So if we write at click, click event handler, we're gonna call a method called jump now. And we haven't created the method yet. Let's go ahead and create that method now, we're creating a function called jump now. And in here, we are gonna call is in pool. And we're gonna to want to set the value of this to something different. And an easy way to toggle is we want to set it to the opposite of what is in pool is currently. So if is in pool is true, we wanna set it to false. If it's false, we wanna set it to true. So we're gonna say we want to set is in pool to what the opposite is of is in pool. Basically, this exclamation mark says if it's true, make it false. If it's false, make it true. And that's what the value is going to be. So now if we go ahead and click jump now, it changes. We are in the pool. Now we can get out of the pool. Let's jump into the pool and we can jump back into the pool. And now we are just toggling some basic information and rendering to the screen using truthy values. Let's do a quick recap so we can just make sure we understand everything that is happening in this application. So this element right here, this H1 element, it renders if, is in pool is false. And then this element right here, it renders if is in pool is true. Now we have the button right here, which might be the most confusing part of the application. First gonna talk about this ternary operator right here. It's basically an if statement. It says, if it's is in pool, if this is true, then we're gonna render whatever is right here. But if it's false, we're gonna render whatever is right here in between this mustache syntax. And this mustache syntax allows us to create this logic in the template. And now we have the click handler that says at click jump now. And we're gonna do a little refactoring just so this makes a little more sense. We actually wanna say toggle jump. Toggle jump just describes what we're doing a lot more um, better for lack of a better way to put it. Now it's, everything still works. And right here we have the import for the ref and we make sure that this variable is a ref variable to make it reactive. And that is our basics of this application for using ref variables. Now we're gonna move on to using reactive variables.